Hello, my name is Sam Studley, and this is my Georgia Tech Physics 2 Lab 3, which is all about circuits. So an introduction to this lab, its purpose was to predict circuit behavior computationally with parallel resistors, measure current potential, and explore capacitor and resistor behavior. So in this lab, our system was the circuit and the surroundings was everything else. However, because it's computational, it's really just the circuit that's in the system. So the fundamental principles here, the first is the node rule, which says that the current flowing into a node is equal to the current flowing out of a node. So this basically says that there's a conservation of charge going into the node, so the same charge has to come out of the node. Second is the loop rule, which says that the sum of all the electric potential differences around the loop is equal to zero. So this is a result of the energy conservation, and this allows us to add or subtract all of the different parts of a circuit and set those equal to zero. And then the third, and probably most important, is Ohm's law, which says that a current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across those points. So the current here is I, R is the resistance, and then V is the voltage. So charge conservation of energy in circuits. So we wanted to predict the currents of I1 and I2 that is measured in ammeter I1 and I2. And so we have two batteries here, and so those were each 1.5 volts, so we have a total of 3 volts coming out of the batteries. So we can say that R total is equal to R1 plus R2, and so R1 was 47, and R2, and R2 was 100, so this was 147 ohms. And so we can say that V is equal to IR, so I is equal to V over R, and so I here, after doing the calculations, is 441 amperes. So charge conservation of energy in circuits, when we reverse the connections of one of the ammeters, what happens? Well, nothing happens, actually. So as you can see, the current up here is 0.02 amperes, and here is still 0.02. So if we replace one of the ammeters with a voltmeter, what happens? So the ammeter reads 0 amperes because the voltmeter has a very, very high resistance. So most of the charge that is coming through the batteries up into the voltmeter is getting stuck and stopped, and it's not making its way to the resistors and then down to the ammeter. And even if there's little charge making it to the resistors, it's definitely going to be stopped by the resistors. The voltmeter continues to read negative 0.03 volt, or sorry, continues to read negative 3 volts because there is not a voltage drop. So all the voltage that's coming from the battery is going into the voltmeter. So what is the voltage drop across each part of the circuit? So here we can use the loop rule and say that um, the voltage of B, which is delta V from A to B, minus IR47, which is delta V from C to D, minus IR100, which is delta V E to F, is equal to zero. So we can set all the parts of the capacitor or the circuit equal to zero. So through some calculations, you find that use this equation, V equals IR, with I being 0 0.02 amperes, and you find that delta VAB is plus 3 volts, delta VCD is negative 0 0.96 volts, and delta EF is that. And if you add all this up, it should be around zero. There might be some rounding errors here, but for the most part, it should be around zero. And that's what you see here. So at the batteries, the voltage goes way up, right up to 3 volts, because the batteries are charging that circuit. And then it begins to drop. It will start to drop here a little bit, steady, and then drop pretty hard, and then constant out. And um, why doesn't the ammeter reading charge? The voltmeter has a high resistance, so little charge flows through it. So if we replace the voltmeter with an ammeter in parallel with the 100 um, ohm resistor, what happens to the current of the other ammeter? So the ammeter has low resistance, so the electrons will flow through the ammeter instead. So instead of going through the 100 ohm resistor, they're going to flow through the ammeter because it's, it's less resistance for them. And so this lowers the overall resistance of the circuit. So the new resistance of the circuit with the ammeter here is only 47 ohms instead of the previous 147 because we're not including this 100 ohm resistor. And so the total resistance of each circuit element, we can say that V is equal to I over R, so R is V over I. So R is R47, which is this resistor, um, when you use V over I, is 48, which is very close to 47. R100, which was this, is 102, which is very close to 100. And then these are all zero because there's no resistors there. And this is just a rounding error thing. That's why the numbers are a little bit off. And so if we have RC circuits, which are resistor capacitor circuits, one is charging and one is discharging. So if you time how long it takes to charge the capacitor here with all of the circuit elements, um, 10 ohms takes about 10 seconds and 20 ohms takes about 20 seconds. Same with discharging, it takes about the same amount of time. So with RC circuits again, if you plot the natural log of V versus time here, you get a linear 
graph. And so if we have a 9-volt battery um, and the bulbs connected in series, what is the RC value? So RC is the resistor times the capacitor values. So predicted, it would be 6. Experimental, so if you do 1 over the slope here, um, which is the inverse of natural log, you get 6.68, which is very similar. So potential errors, one is human error and stopping. So when timing the capacitor, charging and discharging, stopping and starting the capacitor and stopwatch at the same time could have been an error. Also, online simulations fail to accurately represent real world scenarios. So what if we use a real emitter? Real emitters have some resistance, so this would limit the total current in the simulation so they had zero resistance. But if you was used a real emitter, it would have a little bit of resistance. And if we use an actual battery and no resistor, so without a battery, our simulation would depict a capacitor charging instantly, which isn't true because batteries, some, most batteries have a, some small internal resistance.